Pelican Worship Center Ministries in beautiful Pulaski, Illinois. And I'm just so excited that you have chosen to join us this evening. It is going to be a phenomenal time. I'm not going to do it by myself tonight. As a matter of fact, I have some people from our ministry. You're going to love these young people. I promise you they're dynamic. They're exciting. They have creative ideas. Most of all, they love Jesus. And so uh, it makes my job as a pastor so much easier when you deal with people who know the Lord. We're just going to give you just a second or two to uh, call your family, your friends, get somebody, tag them, do what you do, share this on your timeline. We want as many people as possible to be able to enjoy this tonight. It is going to be absolutely awesome. And we send greetings to all of our family and friends in East Africa, Jumbo, praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for our family and friends in the Bahamas, on the East Coast, West Coast. Want to send a shout out to my sister and all the saints at Jesus of Lord Church of Deliverance in Georgetown, Delaware. Our presiding bishop, the Honorable Dr. Ron Webb, pastor of Mount Calvary Powerhouse Ministries. Uh, one of our, our leaders in covenant ministry, Dr. Jesse Webb. We thank God for him. And all of you, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank you for joining in. I'd like to start tonight just with a word of prayer. And then we're going to jump into some very interesting topics. So let's bow together. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share with all those who are watching by way of Facebook or YouTube. I pray that you would touch our hearts, our ears, our minds. Bless us to be receptive to thy word. I pray that you'll bless each of us to endeavor to be a doer of the word, not a hero only. Now, Father, we bind every distracting thing in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would anoint each of us tonight. Use us as vessels, as instruments of faith to pour your word out into many, many people. And God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. 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 Well, praise. I actually want to start tonight. I had a question uh, that was posed as a result of our last Bible study. Someone sent in a question, and the question, uh, the gist of the question was, is it wrong, or e it, does it even still happen today for people to prophesy houses, cars, or, or, or financial gain, or spouses, and what have you? And I thought that was a very interesting question. I thought it was actually a, a, an excellent question, one that needs to not only be asked, but answered. And I want to do this. I'm, I'm going to take a, a shameless second to uh, uh, promote a book that I wrote called Decloaking the Holy Ghost. And I don't know if that's showing up in reverse order on your camera, but in any event, this book deals with a lot of questions about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, also about um, the gifts of the Spirit that's enumerated in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But to answer that viewer's question, is it wrong for people to prophesy material things? The short answer is no. Okay, now, it, it would really take me an in-depth Bible study to go into this, but let me give you some short, short answers, some things that perhaps is helpful. Uh, we have to understand that the prophetic word has a variety of functions. The prophetic word is going to exhort, is going to comfort. It will also bring admonishment, sometimes correction. And I could also say direction. And so for someone to say, you know, the Lord has shown me that he's going to bless you with a new vehicle. Now, what you're going to discover about the prophetic word, a lot of times it's more of a word of confirmation. Confirmation. In other words, God has already shown you this. You've been praying about it. Uh, perhaps you've gone to different dealerships and, and now God is just confirming to you, go forward in this thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's the thing that we have to be concerned about is the motivation uh, of two people. Number one, the prophet. Number two, the recipient of the prophetic word. Too many people in the body of Christ are chasing after signs, wonders and miracles. Now, according to Mark, the Bible says these signs, signs shall follow us. We don't need to be out searching, seeking for signs and wonders. They're going to follow you if you are a believer in Christ. As a matter of fact, what, what Jesus said in Mark, he said, these signs shall follow those that believe. Now, there's a punctuation mark there. And then he says, in my name. So for those of us who are believers, we're going to operate in the name of Jesus Christ, not for personal gain. The, the trouble comes in with, with gifts of prophecy and many of the spiritual gifts is when people try to uh, benefit materially from the gift. Go back and study about the wicked prophet Balaam. It wasn't that he didn't have a prophetic gift, but he would use the gift that God gave him for material gain, for personal gain. Oftentimes in the Old Testament, when the prophet showed up, he showed up because something was out of order. He showed up to bring reproof. He showed up to bring sometimes rebuke, instruction, discovery. Prophecy is foretelling and foretelling, but it's never going to be foretelling. So if you're seeking after these things for your fortune, that's the wrong motivation. 
Now, very quickly, and again, I don't have time to really break this down and unpack the way I would like to or the way I do in our Bible study. It takes me, when I'm teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, our members can tell you that, that that takes about six months for us to go through it because we're very meticulous with that study. And so what, what you discover is that there were instances, even in the Old Testament, I'll give you an example. Uh, Elijah, you remember the story, he prayed God shut the heaven up for three years. Mm -hmm. And then God tells him to get to Zarephath. There in Zarephath, he met, meets a widow and he prophesies to the widow woman. Now, Pastor, what he said, he gives her instruction. Now, remember, a prophetic word can, can be instructional. Uh, it's not <laughs> things you already know. That's the word of knowledge. And again, I don't have time to break that one down. But he tells her what to do. And he, he says, go and feed me. And she begins to tell him about her situation or condition. And he says, feed me first. So prophecy can be conditional. When you have people that's always prophesying new cars, always prophesying new houses, can, can I submit to you that you really don't need a prophetic word from that? What you need to do that, number one, you need a job. A J -O -B, <laughs> and then you got to have some decent credit scores. Now, listen, God is not limited by your credit score. You can have dismal credit score, credit rating, credit history. But if God tells you, I'm going to bless you with this vehicle, you don't really need some profit to, to blow in here from California to tell you you're about to get a Hyundai. Go and fill out the, the application. Go for the car that you want. God will send you confirmation, okay? But let's not get caught up in those material things. If it's always materialistic, you have to question that. Here's the thing. The word of God says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And so there are many people who have, uh, well, I don't want to use that word. They have illegitimatized their, their gift, their anointing. They polluted it for personal gain. So I hope I answered that question. Tonight I want to get into something that is just going to be a blessing to you. It's going to be a blessing to ministry. A lot of times we, we look at uh, Sunday morning. Those of you who are faithful about going to church, and you ought to go to church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're, we're not going to tell you that it's okay for you not to go to church. You should be at church. You should be there. Realizing that church is more than just a building. It is more than ceremony, more than pomp and circumstance. Church, listen, I tell our folk all the time, I'm in church 24-7. It is a spiritual organism that has organization. That's what the church is. It's a called out assembly. It's the ecclesia. And so we have a tendency then to see what happens on Sunday morning. Man, you come in, the praise team, they're rocking over the worship leaders that they got it going on. Hopefully the man or the woman of God comes with a phenomenal word. And so what we see is a Sunday morning or midweek, what looks like a production. It's smooth, it's slick, but you have to understand there are a lot of things that have to take place behind the scenes. There are things that, that happen that have nothing to do with the ability of the choir or the praise team, worship leaders, or the preacher's ability to rightly divide the word of truth. There's a lot of elbow grease that goes on behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. We're going to deal with ministry tonight behind the scenes. Now, we're familiar with what looks like church, but are we really familiar with ministry? And so having said that, I've invited some wonderful people, some dynamic people from our ministry. I love these young people. Praise the Lord. Uh, without these people, you wouldn't see what you see at the Praise and Worship Center. And there are many other people who operate behind the scenes. The list is too long. I, I promise you, we are not a one-man service. Now, when I first started pastoring, man, this is my 42nd year in ministry. Praise the Lord. Wow. Uh, older than anybody on the screen besides me. Uh, wow. uh, maybe one. Uh, and I'm not supposed to be one. Uh, but they all look like they're, you know, 20. So we're going to leave it right there so fast they don't get in trouble. When I first started pastoring, I had the misconception, and maybe it was the reality of the day, that I had to do everything. I had to do everything by myself. Yes, we had deacons. Yes, we had choir members. But, but at that time, I had to be hands on everything. Well, God spoke to me and said there was a lot of work to do. And but the good news was I did not have to do it all by myself. And so I had to learn how to delegate. I had to learn how to share responsibility, I had to learn how to trust other people, because believe it or not, there are other people who can hear from God and do what God says to do without the Miriam spirit, without a takeover spirit, without an Absalom spirit, without a spirit that's going to steal the hearts of the people. 
And so God has surrounded us with a phenomenal staff. I'm going to ask them to tell you who they are. And then I want you all to just tell a little bit about what you do in ministry. And then I'm going to jump back in with some issues. We're going to hit some scripture and we're going to just chop it up and rightly divide the word of truth. So uh, I'm going to start with Sister Rwanda on, on my screen. She's up on the top, my top left. I don't know what she looks like. I may be pointing in the wrong direction, but her right there with, <laughs> with her bodyguard, her husband, who is also an integral part of our music ministry and other things in our ministry. You got to be multi uh, faceted in the individual working in our ministry. I don't care if you can sing like an angel. You have to carry some boxes. You have to sweep, mop, do something else besides your little personal gift. So, Sister Lawanda, you and Joseph, go ahead and tell what you guys do. Tell who you are and talk about what you do. And then we can go to the Moya and Sister Carmela, Sister Joe, and Sister Christine. Crazy thing about doing it in real time. We can't edit it out. Oh, hi. Hey, family. I'm Lawanda. Um, do a few things around here, um, around the Praise and Worship Center. I when you see our social media, that's myself. And uh, when the Moyas introduced, that's usually between the two of us and another lady named Juanita. And so I handled that. And also um, I work with production on our live stream on Saturday and um, I'm a part of the audio visual team. Amen. And this is my husband, Joseph. Hi. Hey family. I'm, my name is Joseph. Uh, I'm part of the music ministry at um, the Praise and Worship Center. I also am kind of hands-on when we have like um, ministry stuff like the boxes and stuff. I help um, as far as cleaning and as far as uh, giving out boxes of uh, fruits and vegetables. I help with all that stuff. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, family. I'm Nimoya. And what I do at St. John is, as Lawanda stated, I work with the social media team. So that's the media department, whether it's uh, me behind the camera for our Facebook lives, our YouTube lives, moderating the social media pages um, or all other duties. And I also help with the outreach of the ministry. So um, whether I'm down there on the Saturday doing boxes or if we're planning our fall festivals or our back to school bashes. Um, so I'm kind of in that realm as well. And then anywhere else in the ministry that I'm needed. Amen. Hello, everybody. I'm Carmela. Um, I am the usher president. I, I'm usually the one that you'll see greeting along with the rest of the ushers. And I also um, teach Sunday school. That's a new responsibility that I've kind of grown into. So I do that also. And on Saturdays, you'll see me waving and greeting cars. Hey, Amen. Hello, Hello everyone. Jesus, you also, she's our traffic director, our unofficial yes. traffic director. You That's can't go parking lot anymore without Carmelo's permission. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Come on, Hello, Joe. everyone. I'm uh, Brother Joe. Um, I help with the music ministry, um, also with, with the outreach and, you know, whatever needs to be done. Amen. Hello, everyone. I'm Christine. I serve on the praise team, uh, the choir. Um, I assist with the children's church ministry. Um, I also assist with the visual communication um, and whatever else my hands are, are found to do. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. It's, it's easy when you have people who don't mind being stretched. Um, I, when I, I taught a minister training class years ago, all of our ministers had to submit uh, whether they wanted to or not to our minister training class. And sometimes it could be quite uh, rigorous, it could be quite frustrating. And one of the things that I taught them uh, that I had to learn the hard way myself, you can't be so anointed until you can't roll up your sleeves and do other things. And so when people have a negative attitude about, here you are, you've been called to preach, we're not fighting that gift, that call of God on your life. But sometimes you don't need to preach. Sometimes what you need to do is drive the church van. Or perhaps what you need to do is go clean the bathroom out. And, and let me tell you, I have no pity uh, on people have to do a variety of things. I got trapped, I'll tell this testimony real quick here. I got trapped at the church uh, after a rather large funeral. A lot, a lot of family members were there. Uh, we had the uh, the repast and the fellowship hall. And so a as people were leaving, I didn't leave quick enough. And when I turned around, all the other um, people in our ministry, all of our trustees are gone, all the deacons are gone. And one of the sisters came and said, we have a horrific mess in the women's restroom. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, go get this deacon, go get that one, get this trustee. Well, that was gone, that was gone, that was gone. So I was the only, I was the last man standing. Uh -huh. And so I, I, I just, uh, I sucked it up, 
put on my brave face and I had my nice suit on too. It was nice shoes. And uh, if you don't know what a mess is, you should have been there with me. I mean, uh, I'm trying to be nice because we're on Facebook Live, but it was uh, it was moisture. It was uh, solid. All the way. <laughs> and so I went in and I was pulling up my pants leg with a, with a major attitude. I mean, major attitude. <laughs> pants leg, legs up. I don't want stuff splashing on me. And so I, I find the, the toilet in question. And I grab the plumber's helper. And let me tell you, the plumber's helper means nothing. It means you are the helper. So I grab this instrument of death almost. And, and you know, you that's not a job you can do gingerly. And I was trying mm-hmm. to sit way back, you know. I'm just <laughs> reaching out to basically with my fingers. And it wasn't working. All I was doing was making a mess bigger and worse than what it was. So finally, I, I, I chucked the attitude and I jumped in there. And maybe chuck was a, a wrong word to use, and that's no pun intended. But, but I got in there and I mean, stuff is flying everywhere. And now I'm irritated, I'm angry, I'm, I'm mad at the deacons, trustees, whatever man I see next, they have had it. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm frustrated. And it's in the midst of that mess that God starts speaking to me. That's right. So you're so anointed that you can't clean my restroom. Mm-hmm. And so after I lived through that experience, I tell all of our associate ministers now, if you're too anointed to clean the toilet, you're too anointed to work in this ministry, you're too anointed mm-hmm. to preach in this place. We have to have workers who don't mind rolling up their sleeves. I'm telling you, before we do our Saturday uh, live broadcast every Saturday, the people you see on, on this screen right now, we're all sweaty. We're unloading boxes, we're stacking boxes, we're getting ready, sound checks and all of that before you guys ever see us. And so it's important that you have a good team. I want to read a passage of the scripture. First Corinthians chapter number 12. I'm going to begin reading at verse 27, and the Apostle Paul is writing, Paul says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Now watch what he says. Paul says, and God has said some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, mm-hmm. thirdly teachers, and after that miracles. Now here, here it comes right here. Then gifts of healing. Please underline the next word, help. That's help, right. help. Government, diversities of tongues. All, are all apostles? Paul asked the question. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Now, God has blessed us to have had the opportunity to preach the gospel uh, in, in many, many regions of the world, overseas as well as here. And I've had an opportunity to lay hands and pray on a lot of people. People will come up during crusades, revivals, or evangelistic services and say, well, Pastor Barney, would you pray for my health? I want you to pray that I get a job. Pray that that God will send me a husband. God send me a wife. God bless my children. It has been a rare occasion when someone has ever, people say, I I want to speak in tongues. I want you to pray that God gives me the gift of prophecy. I mean, a variety of things that people ask to pray for, but, but in 42 years of ministry, it has been a rare occurrence when someone has said, I want you to pray that God will give me the gift of health. The gift of health, it doesn't get the limelight. You're not going to get a, a special service. You know, people don't don't ordinarily say, well, uh, we, we just want to have a special day where we honor and recognize those who operate in the gifts of health. And, and notice Paul uses that word gifts, the gift of health. And so we don't tend to look at that as a gift. Everybody wants to be able to, to be in front of the, the microphone. Uh, Christine, my daughter, is a phenomenal singer. I mean, you know, if I could sing like Christine, y'all might not get a whole lot of sermons out of me. Otherwise, maybe I'll sing the sermon. Praise the Lord. Catch it. We can catch it. I mean, beautiful voice, beautiful spirit. Uh, Joe and Joseph. I mean, these brothers are anointed to play. I have, we have other musicians, you know, who, who are not on the panel with us right now. If I could do what they do, I would do that. People want to do those things. Let me play like these brothers. But people don't come and ask. I want you to pray. Pastor, that God will use me to help. And so people tend to think that that's all ministry is about. So I'm, I'm going to throw our young people under the bus. Uh, I want you to just get, let's deal with this. How is that important? Why is it important for us to have a ministry of help? What, you know, the things that you do at the Praise and Worship Center, why is what you do, why is that significant? So I'm, I'm going to start with, with Joe. Joe was actually otherwise known as uh, Bishop Dick, <laughs> in our ministry. 
I'm going right. to throw the bishop under the bus. And I want you all, don't leave Joe out there hanging. Let's talk about that a little bit because people need to know. Ministry is more than preaching. As a matter of fact, when y'all get done, we'll come back and tell you what minister and ministry really means. That's right. Come on, Brother mm -hmm. Joe. Oh, amen. Um, the ministry helps. That's actually how I got started in what I do. Uh, just a small story. Uh, growing up in church, uh, we would have different services where people would visit and they would bring musicians. And so I noticed that when they came to the church and played, the service would be, it would be different. It would feel different, you know, different, a different praise would go forth. And then the next Sunday when they left, they weren't there. I'm like, man, now it seems like something is missing. And so what I decided myself to do, I was like, I want to bring that to the church, you know? And so that's why I started learning how to play the piano to, to try to bring that, you know, to try to help in that area because music is an important um, part of ministry. And and there are just so many things that you can find yourself to do within ministry. And what you said a lot of stuff, uh, Pastor, that was really important. Um, you don't always have to ask to help. If you see a piece of paper on the floor, I don't have to come to you and say, you know, Pastor, can I get that piece of paper? That's something that needs to be done. That's something that um, that you can see for yourself, you know. But a lot of times we may have a different agenda. We want the we want the praises of men or something like that, and so that that tends to control what a lot of people will do, you know. If they if, if they can get a certain praise out of it or or a certain recognition, you know that that will dictate what they do. And so the Ministry of Health being behind the scenes, the, there are things that always need to be done. And the goal should always be to please God, to please Christ, to have the, this, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That should be the goal uh, whenever we're doing anything. And the, the Bible, I love the scripture that you had. The Bible talks about us as a, uh, as a body. And it says we're many members, uh, but it's the same spirit. And so I'm the left hand, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the right hand. We're never going to, we should never conflict. If we've got the same spirit, we might have a different function, but we should never conflict, but we should compliment and help one another. So Amen. that's just kind of my take on it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, sorry. Um, I was just going to say um, in the scriptures that Pastor sent out to us, he was talking in 1 Corinthians 12, a little bit earlier in that same passage mm -hmm. of scripture in verse 22, I'll read, it says, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and less mm -hmm. important are actually the most necessary. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is speaking of ministry of helps that, you know, usually people chase after what they think are, you know, um, more necessary, more open, more seen, you know, and that's unfortunate that people do that because it takes every piece. Amen. You know, I'm a firm believer that God created our bodies, that every part of our body is necessary. Like you, they say, oh, well, you don't need an appendix or you don't need a gallbladder. Well, I, I beg to differ on that situation. You ask somebody who had their gallbladder removed, they probably will tell you, actually, I kind of wish I still had it. And so it's just as important. So just like that person who cleans or just like um, like Carmela with being an usher, like the Bible talks about that being a doorkeeper, like those roles are just as important as the person who's up delivering the word because it helps the mission of Jesus to go forward. Mm -hmm. So regardless of whatever our role is and what that looks like, if, if it's in the help role, as long as that is helping push the agenda of Jesus forward, then it's just as important as mm -hmm. all of those visible ministries Amen. as well. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sister Christine. Yeah, I'll uh, definitely piggyback on you know what Joe and Lawanda have both said. Um, the ministry of helps is definitely not for those who you know are doing things for show. They're not for show offs. You know that ministry is not for those who need accolades, not for those who need an introduction or need a pat on the back when they get done Amen. doing whatever done Amen. So it seems like you know the ministry of helps is less has become um less attractive but um i feel like those who are willing you know and make themselves available you have to make yourself available you have to be willing to be available you know there are a lot of people that say let me know if you need anything or let me know if there's something i can do 
And then when we call on you, you're, you're, you're not available or you see the need and you don't make yourself available. But you have to, you know, be open, Amen. you have to be willing to make yourself available to free up some time. And it's a selfless, it's a selfless gift. You know, we can't always think about what we're going to get out of it or, you know, how it fits in my schedule. You have to make time for kingdom work because the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom okay. and all other things will be added unto us. Amen. So we definitely have to examine ourselves, make ourselves available. You know, not just be about saying, you know, let me know what you need or let me know if there's anything I can do, but actually, you know, put forth the effort um, to do those things so that it's just not in word, but it's actually in deed. Mm -hmm. I like to say also. Um, Amen. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I like to say also that. Um, when you talking about help, you know, one of the things I could I could pull from my personal experience is uh, watching my mother and my father whenever they were serving in ministry. And like, I can remember them serving the college students there because they saw that they had a need because the, the cafeteria was shut down early on Sunday. And so like, when you talk about help, you know, the, the, the things that you do when you help people, you know, you can make or break a connection on how you help people. And what I mean is this, if you cook somebody a good meal, a quality meal, they eat it. They feel the love in that meal. Amen. If you say, come eat, come sit and eat. We got this meal prepared for you. Come sit and eat with us, come eat. And they eat, they can, they can look at you and say, man, these people are feeding them, are even having a positive attitude, giving them a box of vegetables. People can see. Man, these people care for me. Mm -hmm. They were so careful to put this box in my car. They were so careful. They were so particular when they made my plate of food. They made sure I had enough food. These people really care for me. So when you talk about the ministries of help, it makes, I think it, honestly, it makes or break a ministry. Mm -hmm. right. If you can't be seen helping people, if people don't know that you are a help to people, uh, that you are spending time, Building relationships, using your resources to help people. How can how can they really know about the church if they don't see us helping people, actually getting in the grind and helping people? So that's why that's why I think the ministries of help is so important. Praise the Lord. And I just want to add that you know even with the ministry to help, and we have all the things that Lawanda and Christine and said, but it's your attitude while you're helping and while yeah. you're serving. You know, you've yeah. been with God all week. You you sh you're supposed to reflect that light. So as you're serving people, you have to have that same attitude and that same joy in your posture and your body language has to reflect what what you're doing. Amen. So don't yeah. help somebody and give somebody <laughs> something and say, hmm, no, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we have to present Jesus. That's the way we have to present our service. And anything we do, we have to reflect who God is. Amen. 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 Come on, Sister Namoya, talk to us. <laughs> so I want to, um, that's good what you said, Carmel. I was going to go in the realm of having your attitude, just shifting your mindset. When you talk about the ministry of helps, a lot of times what we see is that people will help you contingent upon what they can get. They'll help you to if they if you only gonna give them five dollars, they're gonna help you enough that's gonna cover that five dollars and then that's it. They're not gonna go above and beyond mm -hmm. that. And so when we are in the ministry of health, it's important to understand that everybody is important, that's everybody right. is vital. Um, yeah. no one person knows everything, and that's mm -hmm. kind of going into teamwork as well, which Pastor brings right. up. No one person knows everything. We have we all have something that we can help someone do each one of us on here and each one of us within just st john ministry as a whole we all have something unique about us that god has given us where we can help and be of help but sometimes we get a spirit of offense or we get a spirit where we're like well i'm not going to share my gifts i'm not going to help you with this because no one is recognizing me no one told me thank you if we're doing stuff for accolades as christine said then it's 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 for not with what we're doing so we just have to make sure that our mindset and our attitude is in check and our and above all our heart is right that's right Amen. 
Can I add one more thing? Come on, just come out. When, when she got to that part, I was thinking, your gifts are not for you. They are for the body. They're for you to serve God with all of your heart. So whatever gift and talent you have is not just for you to hold on to. It's for you to uh, serve and help other people. It's not for you only. Right? Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Well, y'all just kind of kicked it into a different direction here. Since y'all kicked it there, I'm, I'm going to follow that a little bit um, because now we kind of got into uh, things about the attitude or, or, or our perception of ourselves, the role that we play in ministry. Now, Philippians, the word of God said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so one of the things that, that I see is sometimes people uh, come to the table with the wrong mindset, the wrong attitude. Now, if you work around the praise and worship center, let, let, let me let me pick on myself just a little bit. Uh, I can be pretty hyper, uh, you know. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to be in one place at one time, so uh, I might look like I'm flitting around here, flitting around there. It's just always something in my mind, something that I think I need to be doing. Uh, that's just how I am, and so people uh, can be easily offended if they're waiting for somebody to say, "Would you please do this?" or "Would you please do that?" Rather than I think Joe hit it earlier. When you when you see something that needs to be done in ministry, taking the initiative to pick that up and to run with that, to do what simply needs to be done. I talk to a lot of pastors who sometimes feel as though, well, we're not a mega ministry. We don't have a huge staff. And, and uh, I want to just kind of throw this out there a little bit, that you don't always have to have a huge staff, but you do have to have a spirit of unity. You do have to have some teamwork. Someone already mentioned that, stole my thunder, whoever did that. Um, and that, that's good. We, we have to be on one accord, be with one mind. We have mm -hmm. to be working towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. I want to shift a little bit because it's important that people understand. And we're talking about the inner workings of ministry. This, this is this is not a one on one class. This is uh, you got to have some prerequisites to get this class, actually, because when you operate in the ministries of health, sometimes people don't have the time or ministry can move without regards to your feelings. OK, it's not that people don't care. It's not that people are mean spirited. But if we need to get it done, I don't have time to elaborate, uh, you know, and play 50 questions why we need to do what we're doing right now. Ministry is hard work. And some of you have found it out even more. So we see every every week we're feeding uh, 250 to 300 uh, families, families. OK, sometimes twice a week we, we have a pop up dairy. And so we have to have people who are willing to. You're not going to get a pat on the back. I mean, everybody's sweating. I'm sweating. I'm loading cars. I'm unloading trucks. I'm driving the truck. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, not because I'm all that, but because somebody just got to do it. And mm -hmm. so we have to have a mindset that even though maybe I would have done it a different way, this is what we're doing. You can be actively involved in ministry doing your own thing. Now, I'm going to pick on us here. Let, let's go to Hebrews. Uh, this one in my notes, so it ain't in y'all. Hebrews uh -huh. 13 and 17. So... <laughs> Uh, let, let me let me see if I can find that quickly in my Bible, and you all know this by heart. And I want to encourage pastors, you know, particularly if you've been in it for a while, as you can see, I have to reach for my help. Uh, I'm talking about these these reading glasses. As much as I, I reach for the, this help, I had to learn how to reach from help within the body. We can't possibly do it all. If you were relying upon me to have done this Facebook live production, it would be a hot mess. Because, I, I mean, it was totally Greek to me. I didn't even know I could take my smartphone and turn it into a studio. Um, <laughs> but God gave us some people. And I think everything that we need in our ministries, God has placed it there. Amen. You know, if, if we need an electrician, God's going to raise up an electrician or send one to us. So we've always been blessed to have whatever it is that we need. But in Hebrews 13 and 17, I want to pick on a little bit. And, you know, I, I want to read it verbatim. I can quote it by heart. You all can too. You've heard me use this scripture. Sadly, we use this, this verse only when it's like pastoral appreciation services. Uh, but I want to read this because it's significant. Paul is oftentimes given credit for writing the, the book of Hebrews. There's a lot of debate as to whether he authored it or someone else did. Nonetheless, the word of God says, obey them that have the rule over you. Watch what it says. And submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Now, I brought that up, and I said I'm kind of shifting gears a little bit, but actually, I'm still somewhat in the same vein. It's very, it's critically important that we have leadership, number one, well-defined leadership, 
leadership is not defined necessarily as dictatorship, okay? Um, but how, we understand, I want y'all to address this. Somebody has to be in charge, and God gets to make that selection. We're not a ministry that believes we're just going to run by committee. Uh, no, 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 no. God, the Bible says, we already read that earlier, and we could have went to Ephesians just as easily. In Ephesians, the Bible says, and God said in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So God had his protocol. God had his order. He is to find the leadership that he wants in the church. How important, how important is that? I want you all to address that. Is it for you to be able to follow leadership even when there are times, and, and you know what, I'm not going to put them on the spot, but I know them, the Bible says, know them that labor amongst you. There are times when people that God places you over, they aren't going to see what you're saying. God doesn't show them everything. And sometimes they're not going to agree with your opinion about uh, all the things that you want to do. So what I, I, my, my question, what I, I'm, where I am going to throw you under the bus at, how important is it for you to follow leadership? How do you do that and yet maintain the gift, the talents, and the ability that God gave you. Now, I can't do it. All these young people you all see on this panel, I can't do half of what they do, but I can do what I do. And, and, and in our church, you know, we're, we're funny. There's only one pastor at the Praise and Worship Center. Uh, good, bad, and ugly, I'm it, okay? It doesn't mean that I can dictate and dominate their lives. These are young adults. They have their own mindset. But I want you all to address the importance of being able to follow leadership, particularly in scope of, of, of going forth for our fourfold vision and our ministry. So y'all jump on in that. I gave y'all a bunch to deal with right there. Let's deal with that. Drop the heavy on us. <laughs> <I'm big one. laughs> this is a, this is, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, kick it off. Uh, this is definitely a scripture I've read numerous times. I actually read it today, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, you know, what comes to mind is endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. And um, a lot of times we're going to have disagreements. A lot of times you may not see uh, eye to eye, but um, I believe that the most the, the mission is to be unified. Kingdom is is being uh, unified. It's putting aside, you know, different dif uh, your differences. It's really humbling yourself. Uh, for the greater good, for the greater cause. Um, I'm sure we all, all of us on here have had to humble our head ourselves in some respect, you know, some regard. And um, that's what it, that's what ministry is about, you know, taking on the mind of Christ, uh, being selfless, um, following so that you can work together to accomplish a goal. And so that's kind of what I see even within within that, just putting unity, you know, before anything even before your feelings. Um, sometimes you you may get those feelings stepped on. You may get them hurt, but it, it's not a reason to to separate. It's not a reason to call to try to undermine the ministry. It's not a reason to try to undermine your brother. But the Bible tells us, you know, come reason together. You know, let's talk about this stuff. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, reach, um, let's reach some type of uh, compromise. Let's unify. So that the so that the great commission can be reached. That that's kind of what I see in that. All right. Okay. Um, I want to go. Um, I think it's important to have a leader because as a leader, you help us um, navigate and mature in Christ. And just as a small sidebar for me, you know, you um, you have a spiritual insight, a spiritual vision that God gives you, and you can see stuff in people that maybe they don't see at the time. And my little short testimony is. When I had to teach Sunday school, it was uncomfortable for me. It's still uncomfortable when you walk in the room. But um, when I asked you about quitting that job and not wanting to do that job, I really believe now that it was something God called me to do. But you saw that before I ever could see it. And so you gave me the opportunity to grow. And you said, Carmela, you've grown so much in that. And so as a leader, you lead and you're helping us mature spiritually so we can navigate this thing called life. And so the scripture that I have for that one is Hebrews 13 and 7. And it was remember those who led you. And so remember the people who taught you, who spoke the word of God over yeah. you and that you consider the result. And so if I'm following you as you follow Christ, I'm not going to go wrong. Amen. So you've given us good examples. So as leaders, you're an example of what it's like to serve in the midst of being hurt, serve in the midst of going through, what, even in the midst of this pandemic. This is something we've never seen. 
but we have the ability to see past this. This is not going to last forever. And so Amen. we get that from leaders who lead by example. That's, all I, that's all I have. But we have to <laughs> imitate the faith that you have as you follow Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. And I feel like it takes it takes a um, to be a good leader. You have to, you know, have known how to be a good follower, you know, to have have served, Amen. to Amen. have had that experience. Like, how are you going to teach me? Uh, to be submissive and to be obedient, to follow you when I've not seen you do what you're telling me to do. So Amen. as you, you know, dad started out saying, you know, how you had to pick up that mop, how you had to pick up that plunger um, and go in and clean that bathroom. You know, those are stories that, you know, the people of God need to hear from their leader. Um, and, you know, hearing that, you know, we should have no problem being submissive. We should have no problem humbling ourselves before you know, you're under your leadership because we know that you, you're you not doing anything or you're not telling us to do anything that you yourself you're not do. do. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All I know is that I see, I see my pastor sweating and picking up boxes every Saturday. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I just want to point out, you know, the fact that we see you doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're not it's not a it's not above you to pick up the boxes the sweat mm -hmm. pick mm -hmm. up the um what's that thing called dolly <laughs> uh, to pick the dolly up and be, be swinging the boxes everywhere mm -hmm. i think that's the biggest thing is uh mm -hmm. i remember um me and joe were talking one time and he told me that there was a um there was like a it was like a little statue of or something it was basically talking about what pastors do. And I think it shows the members pushing something, but at the front, the pastor was pulling. Pulling. The, he was right. pulling the uh That's good. The, That's the, good. The, uh, the rocks or whatever they were they were pushing. So the fact that we have a leader that ain't scared of no mm -hmm. kind of word is very important because the Amen. fact that the head is willing to work is mm -hmm. gonna trickle down Amen. To to the arms, the fingers, and all the toes. Amen. That's right. Amen. And to, pick, and to piggyback off of that, like I, I I say this often, like as far as leadership goes, I, you could just go to to Jesus. You know, Jesus is the greatest example of leadership. Right. And to me, leadership equates to serving. If you're Amen. not willing to serve, then there's no. Why would you call yourself a leader? Like you think Man. of Jesus and his example like literally and i shared this with uh sister carmela this morning like you got to think about it in jerusalem times like most people didn't even have shoes and he was washing feet in yeah. jerusalem times like there were no pedicures there was no. most of the big baths every day like and he was out here washing feet because you imagine how nasty feet were back then but he was out here literally washing feet and being he was that example, example. and so and serving because at the end of the day if you're if you're only doing just so you can be seen and you're not serving and everything behind you is tearing up like jack that's the type of leaders you're going to produce as well because they're the leaders that you produce is following the model that you set forth mm -hmm. so the reason why we're all up here you know able to serve the way that we do because we we see the leader that we have because just like all of us are out here sweating and dri dropping bullets on Saturday, Pastor Barnett is just as well. Like sometimes, if y'all if y'all look real close on the broadcast on Saturday, his shirt be so right. we done already work and put him <laughs> exercise before twelve o'clock. But because we're serving and we want to serve our we're on to serve our church family and serve our community, and so. Amen. When it comes to that and teamwork and unity, you know, because all of us have that same mission, we want to make sure that we're loving God, but we're also loving his people. Amen. 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 I love what you said about, you know, Jesus, <laughs> how yeah. he, uh, you know, humbled himself to wash, you know, his disciples' feet. He, uh, he performed miracles. He healed Amen. the sick. He didn't mm -hmm. hold all the all the power that he had, you know, just for his own good. Mm -hmm. uh, he prayed to God to, you know, uh, increase the fish and uh, the loaves of bread, not so that he can feed himself, mm -hmm. but so he can heart, uh, hoard it all for himself, Amen. But so that he can feed the multitude. Amen. So, you know, he is our prime example. Amen. Amen. It's awesome to be able to have a leader that does follow after the ways of Jesus, because not Amen. everybody has that testimony. So we are, you know, we are truly blessed. Amen. 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 And it makes it easier to follow leadership and yeah. to be under leadership when you have someone leading by example. I think we hear that term so often to where 
and then we're like it goes in one ear and out the other but having someone who lead by example meaning they are out there laboring what they're asking of you to do they've already done it or they are doing it so they're not doing anything that they're not requiring or asking you to do so having just having a leader um having pastor barnett as a leader but even in ministry if you have other leaders like with the praise team if you have a director over the praise team if they are leading by example then just because they're not pastor barnett doesn't mean that you shouldn't be under their leadership because it's right. them as a leader as well so it works all throughout the ministry mm -hmm. from the head on down mm -hmm. um it works that way with leadership so yeah amen one of the things that, that you know we, we look at jesus as our example for everything and uh, when you look at the congregation that Jesus had, just a couple of thoughts very quickly. Jesus didn't always speak the kindest words to his disciples. <laughs> you don't know, and sometimes it can be pretty abrupt. Uh, I mean, he just gets to the point, you faithless generation. Uh, he called Peter the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, and he just, he dealt with it. But what we don't find, what we don't find is people saying, you know what, I don't have to put up with Jesus. I'm back. I'm out of here. Uh, we don't. We, we don't find them doing that. They they dealt with it. They humbled themselves, and therefore they were able to follow him where they need to follow him. When we look at at, at this, this whole thing called servitude, people sometimes confuse what ministry is, and so we have a tendency to think when we hear, hear the word minister, we hear the word ministry, we think about preaching. No. Nope. We, we say, well, minister this or minister that. Everybody thinks, okay, that's a preacher. If we say ministry, we think we're going to have church service. And, and really, if, if you look up the word uh, minister, minister comes from the Greek word diakonos. And then ministry comes from the Greek word diakonoia. Uh, diak diakonio, diakonoia. I get it out in just a second. And so when we when we look at diakonos and, and diakonia, I got it right that time, diakonia. It's ministry, the agnosis, is minister. It doesn't mean preach. None of the definitions. The translation has nothing to do with preaching, but it, it literally means one who serves, Science. particularly serving in the affections of Christ. And so that's what ministry is. We, we talked about feeding people. We have to feed people spiritually. First and foremost, I want to feed you spiritually. But but if you're a natural man, if your physical man is starving to death then you're not going to be able to hear any words of life. All you want to do at that point is eat. So we have to feed people not only spiritually, but we need to feed them physically. But then we got to feed them even their soul needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. And so in order to do that, we don't have to have a thousand people. We just need committed people. We need people to say, you know what? If it means that I have to get out here and sweat, uh, I'm not too anointed. You know, with, with an earned doctor degree, with a master's degree, two master's degrees, two bachelor's degrees, has nothing to do with anything, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. It meant that I sat down in, in school long enough to jump through the hoop. Did I learn some things? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a lesson of perseverance. I learned how to research. That That's all well and good. But that did not teach me to roll my sleeves up. That's right. And pick up a box or pick up a mop or the plunger. It's about serving. And so I, I want to, let, let me see if I can get us back into the ministry behind the scenes a little bit. I, I took us on a tangent. Uh, I want to go to the things you ask me because people, somebody mentioned about getting offended, and it's easy for people to get offended when they try to help. And those of us, some some of you are like me. If I know how to do something well, and I'm trying to get a job done, I may not want to stop right then and there to tell Joseph how to do this. He may ask, but I'm so focused on getting the task done until I, I'm not really hearing him. So we have to slow down sometimes and say, well, Joseph, this is how you do that. But by the same token, and I think if you said that if you see a piece of paper on the ground, mm -hmm. pick it up. You, you don't need an anointing to do that. You don't need divine wisdom <laughs> preparation. Why do you need prophetic word to, to pick up something or fix something when you can do it? In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 10, the word of God says, Whatsoever mm -hmm. thy hand find it to do, to do. It's like the Nike commercial. The Bible just says, do it. Just do it. Just with, do, it. Like it says, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whether thou goest. Having all these things, my, my Monroe said uh, one of the wealthiest places was a cemetery. Mm -hmm. A lot of talents, a lot of books, uh, a lot of could have, should have done things yeah. go to the graveyard. What a depository the cemetery is 
because people had untapped potential or you didn't take the initiative. You don't always have to have an invitation. The people that you see on the screen didn't need an invitation. As a matter of fact, some of them just kind of bogarted their way in because they knew that uh, either I didn't have the, the experience, the, the expertise, or the desire. I had no desire to be on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, none of that stuff. But, but the pandemic, and this kind of goes back to where we are today, the pandemic has changed the playing field. Our message is never going to change. We are, we are a ministry that believes in holiness. We believe in righteousness. We believe the Bible is right. It is inerrant. It is infallible. It is immutable. It does not change because of what's politically or socially correct. It stands on its own merit. But we've had to change our methodology. So so now we have people who can get in place. Uh, Christine mentioned some stuff. You know, here, and this, this is what you got to understand about ministry. I'm not going to have a committee meeting if I want... Sometimes Christine, because that's my daughter, she may have to go places where everybody else is not going. I, I'm not going to ask her permission about, can I ask you to sing a song tonight? The devil is a liar. Christine, I, I want you to sing how great thou art. Now, and I expect her to know it, too. She's so, 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 one time since I've known her, but if I request that song, she better bring it up. Uh, Joe, Joe, they're musicians. My son, uh, my son, Sean and TJ, they're musicians. I don't care whether y'all practice that song or not. If I want to hear strong faith, you better figure that thing out. And sometimes I don't even know the words to it. You know, I can listen, you know what I'm talking about. And I yeah. get that. Carmela um, was diligent as usher. She, she may have had a, I don't know what she went through at home before she gets to the Praise and Worship Center. All I know is when she gets there, if I need something and I signal for her, I need her to come and get it. And the more you work that camera, and I, I'm sure I give her a hard time sometimes on Saturday to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if, if I decided the last minute to come on the, the right side rather than the left side, I, I'm not going down asking for, for permission. I expect us to be one accord. Uh, sometimes, you know, Rwanda does a lot of our production behind the scenes. I try to be obedient and get information to her before the message. She may not get the scriptures I'm going to use until uh, two minutes before the broadcast. But I got to have people who can what you find in your hands to do to do that. We, we talked about, and I'm, I'm going to hit that some. I don't want to kill all of our time. We, we talked about being a cohesive unit, being that body of Christ. The word of God says we are many members of the self same body. And so I want to go back to Corinthians, uh, verse number, uh, back to chapter 12. Let's go to verse 25. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. I want to read that. The word of God says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Because I'm the pastor doesn't mean that I deserve, have to have, need the limelight. It means I have to operate in that particular function. Now, biblically speaking, there are five-fold ministry gifts or five ascension gifts that God gave. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It doesn't really matter whether you have a title or not. You have a position. You have an assignment in the body of Christ. I, I don't believe in pew members. And people throw that word around. I'm just a pew member. That, that is deceptive. That is you being completely out of the world of God. Everybody should be doing something in ministry. I want you all to deal with, and we, we kind of hit on it uh, a little bit, but I want to go back to that. I want you to deal with the importance of uh, not allowing schism, not allowing the vision within the body of Christ, even though you may have some personal differences with someone in the ministry. Everybody has to remember, we're not perfect. We are imperfect creatures who belong to a perfect God. And because we have our imperfections, sometimes maybe Carmel and I don't see uh, eye to eye on everything. We may have political uh, opinions that, that slightly differ. We may have opinions on even an interpretation of a scripture. We're not going to mess with the word of God. But, but we may say, well, but I can't see that yet, but we're going to ultimately do what the Bible says. So how, how do we protect ourselves? How do you protect yourself in ministry with all the different players you have at the Praise and Worship Center? How do you prevent schism in the body? Well, my, the question I always ask myself is, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for the people? Or are you doing it for God? And so a lot of times we don't want to do stuff or somebody's made you mad. You have to choose to walk in forgiveness and love. And remember, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for God. God is supposed to get the glory out of everything that you do. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the best things is that, you know, when you disagree, 
is having that conversation. Like mm-hmm. sitting up there and you know, yes. you stewing yes. over it and is not helping anybody and it's only increasing the friction between the two of you, like or three of you or whomever that is. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, having that conversation it, it it helps because one thing is that we all know none of us God ain't get given none of us the, the power to read each other's minds. So I am right. doing something that you have no idea. I, I have no clue that it's getting in your nerves. You know, I might just be, you know, I suck my teeth every three steps. I don't know that I do that. That's just something I've always done. I don't do that, but that's just an extreme example. <laughs> but but if, if you don't know, if I don't know that that's offending you, how can I help you? So, and, and it comes down, like, you have to be, I've learned as far as teams, you have to be very intentional on making sure that the unity remains within the team. So checking in with one another, asking, mm-hmm. are you okay? Is and, and and then also as you having that same consideration for your brother and sister, like making sure that they don't have to read your mind. If something, if something bothers you, go to them and say, you know what, I really didn't care for how you did this, or I really didn't like when you said this, or I wish you would allow me to do this. And I feel like I can help you more with this. And I feel like a lot of the schism that happens within teams and within churches would die down if people were just to have conversations. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. And you definitely have to be open-minded because everybody's going to have an idea. Everybody's going to have an opinion. But we realize that we can't use, we, we may not be able to use everybody's idea or everybody's opinion. But there is a way that we can, you know, combine you know, all of our ideas and opinions to, you know, come up with one goal and, you know, one Amen. person's condition so that we can all still be with one accord and, you know, not being, you know, easily offended when things don't go our way. Amen. 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 I want to read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And it says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each come other. Yeah. Let there no divisions in the church rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose amen so with that aspect of it and this is straight from straight from the scripture just coming from the scripture we need to live in harmony we don't have to agree with everything each other do we don't have to agree with how with the decisions that one another made but sometimes what often happens is we get into a spirit of offense well, they didn't use my idea, so I'm not going to talk to them no more. Right. And we don't handle it right then and there. It's so I, I truly believe that it's not a lot of unity. And then it becomes to be a lot of schism because people don't have that conversation. They right. go weeks, months, they'll go a couple of years being mad at you about something you did four years ago. And you look at like, I don't even remember I did that. <laughs> But because they didn't have that conversation, because they didn't come to you, I didn't say, hey, Carmela, I think when you gave me that fan, I I didn't like the way you gave it to me. I think you threw it at me a little bit. Instead, Mm -hmm. they will walk around and be offended. And so now, if pastor is calling for me and Carmela to go forth and do something, we can't coexist because Mm -hmm. I'm mad at her. I got to ask her about something that she don't even know she did. Mm -hmm. She's not even aware that I was offended. So having that conversation and being able to live in harmony, to dwell among, like we don't have to agree with one another. Joe is my biological brother. I don't agree. If I don't agree with something he says, I don't get mad at him and go years without talking to him over something. I just let him know I don't agree and we move forward from that. With our brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to be the same same way. way. We have to be willing to quickly forgive because just think about if Jesus doesn't forgive you. That's right. Yeah, what would it be if he don't forgive us? And so the Bible teaches us to forgive as his father in heaven has already forgiven us. Amen. Amen. You brought up a a powerful point. Uh, I think I caught maybe seven months just on dealing with the spirit of offense. And maybe maybe I need to do that on here because people don't realize how detrimental the spirit of offense is to you as a Christian to walk with an offended spirit. There's a Greek word, scandalon. Scandalon deals with offenses, and it really deals with a, a triggering mechanism of, a, of a, a trap. So in other words, the devil sets the trap, but then you're the one who actually triggers the, the trap on yourself. 
Um, back in the day when I was a teenager, we would make rabbit boxes to catch uh, live rabbits. And, uh, you know, it was a simple contraption, but it had a triggering mechanism in it whereby the rabbit would go in this box that was dark on one end. And as he went in, his head would hit a little lever and it would cause a slide to come down immediately behind him. Mm -hmm. But that's what the devil does. He gets us into these dark corridors, closes mm -hmm. the door behind us, and we walk around with that offended spirit. And you're right. And he, he, you said something so, so, so critically uh, important when, when Paul talked about uh, having that same mind, that one mm -hmm. mind. Now, here's what we have to understand. It's difficult for us to be of a same mind if you're not spiritual minded. Mm. Word of God, mm. carnal minded is death. And so when you have people, and this is why it's important. Everybody can't, you know, I said everybody in church needs a job. Well, first of all, everybody in church needs to be saved, okay? <laughs> first of all. Different, different, different panel discussion. Uh, when you have people who are, who are church folk, and if you've been around me enough, you know, I differentiate between state folk and church folk. Church folk are people who just like going to church, who have no relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that, they come with a carnal mindset. I can't be on one accord with you if you don't really love Jesus. I didn't say you had to be perfect, but you have to have the mind of Christ. Now we can find that common ground. The more you said it best about, you know, you disagree with me moving forward. I've learned uh, in the time that I have been saved to disagree without being disagreeable. I don't have to agree with you on every issue, but I have no right to be disagreeable toward you. I can still love you and say, well, now, you know, the Bible don't see that. I'm going to still love you. I, I have people I have people who don't have a problem with drinking wine or beer or whatever. I, I don't personally, that, that's not my cup of tea. I don't need it. I don't pursue it. Don't even offer that to me. But I'm not going to fall out with you because that's where you are. I grew up in a ministry where if a woman put on a pair of pants, they were Jezebel. You were going straight to hell with those pants on. Uh, that's, what, that's what was taught. And I still have friends who believe in that, who still embrace that. I don't stop loving them because that's where they are. That's not where we are. I know that a woman is not going to hell because she put on a pair of pants, nor does it bring out any lesbian tendencies in her. There are pants made for women. There are pants made for men. Now, now, if George Joseph put on their wise pants, I'm going to be looking a little funny. Uh, after <laughs> the of Sunday, you know, maybe they didn't check the wardrobe. We ain't going to fall out over these right. type of issues. We're going to love people, even people that may not love you Jesus. You still have to love them. And we get, do we have assistance? Listen, there are people who have blessed us because they saw what God was doing through our ministry. They don't even profess to be saved, but they said, you know what, Pastor Barnett, I'm going to make a donation. I believe in what you're doing. And, and this is what ministry is. Ministry is about serving. It's about working one with another. And, and in order to do that, I want to encourage you pastors out there. Maybe you don't have a lot of people, but the Bible says if two of us would touch and agree as to anything on earth, in the gospel according to Matthew 18, if we touch and agree as to anything on earth, Jesus said it would be done for us. The word of God also says where two or three were gathered together in his name. Jesus said, I'm going to be there with you. So if you can find, if you can find some phenomenal people in your ministry, like the people you see here tonight, and we have so many more, we just can't get them all on here. I'm limited to six people, I think, on this particular platform. We could have lined up person after person after person who were rolling up their sleeves and watch this. Sometimes they may say, Pastor, I don't know where you're going with this. But when I tell them, hey, this is what God wants us to do, they go forward and they do those things. I'm, I'm going to read one more scripture. And I know we're out of time, but I, but I got to get this in. Colossians chapter number 3, verses 23 through 24. I'm going to get some, some ministry of help here. The word of God says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and mm -hmm. not unto men. Knowing that the Lord that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. The word of God says, Whatever I do, if I sing, I'm gonna sing unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I take that bathroom out. If I gotta plunge another toilet, I'm going in there, I'm gonna sing the whole time, plunging that. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. If you gotta drive the church, man, man, you ought to be giving God praise, glory, and honor. Let me tell you mm -hmm. something that I learned. You don't just go to church. You don't just uh, pick up those boxes. You don't just play your instrument or sing or usher. You don't just do the production. You do it as unto the Lord. I get to do that. I get to go to church. I get to pass out boxes on Saturday. Man, I get to pick up the microphone and preach the word of God. We get to do these things. That's mm -hmm. the 
blessing that you get to do that. It's not a burden. It is not a chore. So I want to encourage you, stop acting like it. They're calling you to say, don't start coughing. Don't start acting like, well, y'all can get somebody else. You get to stay for Jesus. Joe, you get to you get to play that keyboard mm-hmm. for Jesus, man. Carmela, I'm telling you, you get to usher for the Lord Jesus Christ. You get to teach Sunday school. The more you, you get to do all this stuff behind the scenes with the camera to help your pastor look like he know what he doing when he don't. You get to do that. LaWanda, Joseph, y'all get to do what you do. All of the things at the Praise and Worship Center, all of you in the body of Christ, you get to do what you do for the honor and the glory of God. God. I'm five minutes out of time. I am out of time. Listen, if you like the panel format, please let us know. Give us some thumbs up. Give us some hearts, some comments. I'm looking. I'm waiting for some thumbs to go up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give us some signs. Say something. Say something to us so that we know that this is something that's a blessing to the Oh, there they go. Man, y'all, <laughs> y'all see that all those thumbs? I don't know what that means, but it's a bunch of little thumbs going up. That means they like it, Pastor. <laughs> they, 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 like they like it. And if the hearts mean they love it. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of love going on here. There is a lot of like. There's a lot of likes and love, and they're sending Amen. them in for you. Listen, we thank God for each and every one of you. And we want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. We want to encourage you to join us for our uh, drive through for your breakthrough blessings on Saturday at 12, and then the drive by blessing at 1 o'clock. We're waiting to hear from our distributor. Uh, I'm hoping we'll have an opportunity to provide milk again. I'm waiting on a phone call to let us know if or when that's going to happen. I was hoping that it was going to happen uh, on Tuesday, but I'm still waiting for that call. Uh, one of our covenant pastors, Dr. Jesse, he has been such a blessing to hook us into that. So we thank God for all of our covenant pastors. And that this is what fellowship is about. It's about blessing. We get blessed, we pass it on to other people, and we want to continue to be a blessing in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. It has not hurt the body of Christ. It has stretched our ministry. Amen. Thank God. Please, please like us and share, share all the stuff you do. They always put it on the bottom of the page because they know I don't know what I'm talking about, but y'all know what to do. Praise the Lord. Uh, also, uh, we want you to join us again next Wednesday for our Bible study, and we're going to do some more panel discussions. Has such an overwhelming response the first time. I'm going to bring some of those brothers back and perhaps some other people. We're just going to do this. We want to be a blessing to you. I want to take the opportunity to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus for yourself, now is a great time for you to accept the Lord. I want you to pray this simple prayer as we get ready to leave you. I want to pray like this. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner in need of salvation. I'm inviting you to come into my heart. Save me, Lord. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart unto righteousness of confessing unto salvation. I believe that you're the son of God, that God raised you from the dead, and that if I call in your name, I shall be saved because you said so. And so I turn my back on Satan and sin. I'm accepting you right now as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. You're my new brother. You're my, my new sister in the Lord. And the angels in heaven, they are rejoicing right now. There is a praise party going on just because of you. And we give God the glory. Well, let's pray for the rest of us as well. Father, I pray right now that you would touch our president, touch our governor, our mayors, every governmental official, every elected individual. I pray that you would give them a mind to do those things that are right, just and pleasing before you. Give them a mind to set aside political foolery, town foolery and ideologies and set aside the differences, Lord, that they may do what's best for this nation. Father God, I pray for the doctors, the nurses, every CNA, every orderly, every staff member, every first responder. I pray, Lord, that you will protect them. Protect my friend, my brother, my sister who's watching and listening to this telecast. Protect them from this COVID-19 virus. Oh, God, and we pray that this virus would disappear just as quickly as it burst on the scene. Mm-hmm. We call it to an end right now. We're touching and agreeing that this pandemic stops. Oh, God, that you will return us to a new normal. Father, better than what we came out of. Help us, oh, God, to repent, to turn from our wicked ways and to see your face. Now, Father, I pray that you will bless every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Bless every church member, every member of the body of Christ. Help us to be about our Heavenly Father's business. And Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I want to thank our panel again. And, and y'all, please love our panel. If you have any questions you would like for us to address uh, on our broadcast, 
if you would just uh, follow the directions, we will be more than happy to address those questions. And what we don't know, we'll go back and research it. I have a wealth of theologians at my disposal. We will get you an answer based upon what thus says the word of God. Well, as I always like to say at the conclusion of our, our, our meeting, stay blessed by the best. God bless you. God keep you. Thank <laughs> you.